Hey guys, uh, just watched The Office, ate a hot dog, and I'm ready to sit down and do some mad digital logic. So I've got Logisim open, um, but actually I don't think I want to start there. I think I want to start by kind of thinking about what I'm going to do in uh, LibreOffice Calc, or just essentially Excel. Um, so I, I want to make a function, or I want to make a digital logic circuit that takes the uh, the square, or it squares the input. So I'm just going to kind of start playing around in Excel and see what some of the stuff might look like. So if I if I say my input, and I'm going to put this in decimal, right? So base 10. I'm just going to start off with 0, 1. And I'm going to say this is a 4-bit number. So we know that 2 to the power of 4 minus 1 is 15. So we, I'm going to bring this all the way down until we're at 15. So our inputs are going to be 0 through 15. And let's uh, let's figure out what this is in binary. So uh, LibreOffice and uh, in Excel, they have a function uh, bin to deck. Oop, we actually want deck to bin, which is just decimal to binary conversion. I'm going to go through and I'm just going to select that guy there. And my parentheses. And there we go. Now I can, uh, maybe some of you don't know this. I just learned it recently and I'm not ashamed to admit it, but... This little uh, black square here, if you double click it, it'll go all the way down to the end of your data. And there we go, now we can just convert that to, uh, to binary. And I actually don't like this because I'm only using the amount of bits that I really need. So uh, if I change this to four, this right here says how many bits are in the number. So if I keep that like that, and if I click this, now, now everything's four bits. Uh, and now I want to figure out what that's going to be on the output side. So let's f first find the decimal one. So our decimal, um, we're going to take this guy, and I'm, I'm just going to say multiplication, right? A2 times A2, that, that'll still give us the square. So there's our decimal, and we see uh, this guy right here, uh, the maximum output is going to be 225, which is uh, shy of the max value we can get in an 8-bit number. So let's, uh, so we know that we're going to have an 8-bit output maximum. So let's figure out what this is going to be in binary. So out, bin, and let's take... Just once again, we'll do uh, deck to bin. Select, oops, select this guy here. And I'm gonna say eight places, right? eight bits. That down. And there we go. So you know, this is our input. This is gonna be our corresponding output. All right, so now I think we're set to go into Logisim and start cooking this up. So got just a blank Logisim project and I'm going to go to window combinational analysis and this is setting me up to do a uh, kind of a new circuit here just my dog squeaky toy in the background or that all right um so let's call our input uh let's call in uh I'm going to start with most significant first because the way it builds the truth table so we're going to say in three, in two, in one, and in zero. Um, if if you accidentally put them in the wrong order, and your truth table has a uh, right here, you can see you've got in one or in three, in two, in one, and zero. If your truth table is in the wrong order, uh, you can always just move these up and down if you need to. All right, so now we've got our output. Uh, and so how many outputs we're going to have, well, we're going to have, uh, eight outputs, right? Eight bits. So that means eight outputs. So we're just going to say, we're just going to start off out seven and just go right down out six out five. 
two, one, and out. All right, so we've got our eight outputs, and I'm gonna look at our table. We've got all of our possible configurations. So by default, all of our outputs are set to don't care condition. Um, that's what the X means. And none of these, uh, none of these inputs are gonna have don't care conditions. So uh, what I like to do immediately is just start setting them all to zeros, right? And then I'll go through and set my ones. So I'm just gonna start doing that. I hope you are all having a good day. Hopefully you're reviewing this video cuddled up on your couch. Probably probably don't have any pets to cuddle with, but hope you're doing well. Feeling pretty good right now. So obviously this is I mean it's not it's not super tedious, but I mean it's it is to sit and watch in a video, so that's why I'm just kind of saying stuff. But imagine if you had to do all these K maps by hand, which you can totally do. It's not unreasonable because it's just it's just a four input K map for each individual bit, and so you just had to sit down and do eight K maps. Not too ridiculous, but having one once we set this all up, it'll be uh, oops be nice because it'll automatically do everything for us and we can easily change things if we need to all right so i got everything set to zero so now i want to start mapping this output over onto this table here so obviously zero squared is zero then we have one and then next guy is just this one is set and this guy here this guy here then one one zero zero one. Oops, hard for me to keep track of here. All right. Uh one one I'm just mapping right over from my Excel sheet that I generated, right? One one and then one. Then we got a one there. And a one zero one there and then what else do we got one one zero zero one and we got a bunch of ones here one two three four and then one and zero zero one oops hurt my eyes all right one zero one zero one zero zero one Almost there. Almost there. Uh, my God. All right. So we did it. That's it. So we've entered our truth table for this whole function here. All right. So we've got four inputs and eight outputs. Quite a few to, to deal with, but not like we just did it right now. Not too unbearable. Now. We can start looking at our expressions that we generate from this table here. Um, and this is nice since it's a four input uh, function, uh, we can actually view the, the K map for each individual bit. Uh, this is kind of cool. Um, apparently output one is never, never high. Output zero is high half the time. All right. Uh, and also, if we wanted to, we could change this to product of sums, but who wants to deal with that stuff? So I would say at this point, we are completely ready to go ahead and click build the circuit. Obviously, uh, the other thing that you could do is you could potentially sit down and maybe do these K-maps yourself, and you could actually input the functions into here and generate the table from the functions, right? So right here, we just have in three, ended with, or in three not, ended with in two, ended with in one, or in three not, ended with in two, et cetera, et cetera. Um, anyway, uh, this is just something, if, if you wanna go about it that way. I, I prefer to do it with the truth table. 
Now if I click build circuit, I get a few options here. I could give it a name. So let's call it the uh, square. And so I'm gonna, uh, I don't wanna do it in NAND gates only. That's gonna be a lot of NAND gates. Maybe if I was making an integrated circuit out of this, I would, but I'm gonna suppose that I wanna build a bill of materials for this. And it's pretty common, right? The most common gates are to have two input gates. So I'm gonna click this so we only use two input gates and we don't have anything like a six input OR gate. So I click OK. And now when I go to Logisim, here is my circuit. Um, so you can see, remember this bit doesn't change and so it's just tied to a constant zero. So it's always a zero. So we've got some inputs here and some outputs and Logisim went ahead and just built this entire circuit based on our expression. Very cool, right? Procedural uh, logic design, essentially. Now if we click here, the uh, little pointer finger, we can start manipulating things here. So right now we've got an input of all zeros and our output is zero, 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 zero. Uh, and if I change this now, to an input of one, one squared is one. Now we go to two squared and we expect to see four, right? So you got zero, 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 one, zero, zero, which is four. Uh, and then let's put in three. Three squared is nine. And here we've got bit eight and bit one, right? Or I'm saying the bit values, not necessarily the bit number. We've got an eight plus one is nine. And so we could test this. It wouldn't take that long to test it for every possible value, right? Uh, so if you've got four, you expect 16, and this, this bit value is 16. This appears to be working pretty well. Um, so there's a few things that I can do with it besides for simulating. Um, one thing is if this was only a part of my circuit, I could go into, uh, you go into another design and I could just drop the square circuit in here. I can make some modifications to this. If I uh, edit the circuit appearance, I could put some labels and stuff. But right now we just know that these blue pins are inputs and these red pins are outputs. So I could hook them up to a bigger system if I wanted to. Another useful thing that we can do looking at this is if you want to build our bill material, we can um, go to project and uh, get circuit statistics. We get circuit statistics, we can see that I've got 10 NOT gates, 20 AND gates, and six OR gates, right? These are all two input OR gates and two input AND gates, and obviously one input NOT gates. Um, so something to consider is normally an integrated circuit has four, uh, has four gates on it, right? So an AND gate integrated circuit, like a 74 series uh, AND gate, will have four two input AND gates. So I to know how many gates I actually need, I just take this and divide it by four. So I need five AND gate circuits in order to make this. Um, same thing with the OR, uh, I would need uh, two, right? Um, so I, I would consider this, uh, pretty much a done design. Obviously don't forget to, to save things. Uh, another nice thing is we can export an image. If we export an image, uh, I'm just going to put it right to my desktop here. Uh, if we export an image. Let's just call it, yo, obviously choose better file names. Than, um, and what's nice is the image is. Nice black and white, nicely formatted, easy to read. Yeah, so uh, that's the end of this little design. Hopefully this kind of helps you think about how you want to go about doing projects uh, in Logisim.